you're watching Audio Tree Live. Today is Friday, October 27th, 2017. We're very excited to have in the studio Single Mothers. Take it away, guys. I got a rock and roll apartment, yeah, just four walls and a door, a couple posters, all those walls of the guy who lived here before. Sometimes I wonder if he got out and started living a stupid dream, or if he finally hit rock bottom, or he's just tipping the scales like me. Well, don't need much to feel successful, I'm gonna make just the fun of the way. Put it down, I've seen those two, that's not a lot of television, so you're not gonna cable, man, but the preacher still persisted. Yeah, I lay out like a bouquet, or pick the lady, bitch, and in that live with single mothers feel free to take it away into that next one whenever you're all ready
Sexy Life for single mothers. I love the energy you guys are fucking bringing it tonight or today, I guess. You know, I'm loving it. I know your live shows are pretty intense as well for the most part. Have you guys had any like injuries, like major injuries or anything like, because you're talking earlier about your headphones falling off. You're worried about that when you're headbanging. Have you guys like had anything wild happen on stage? Cut my finger once. Yeah. <laughs> I used to play Bearfield all the time, and I once I, I, we were playing this basement, and I got a bottom of a beer bottle just jammed in the oh, back of my foot. Damn. That's got, not and fun. It got, and it got infected. Did you continue the show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I started that's wearing good. shoes though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. After that. And then we played Riot Fest, and I was wearing shoes, but my shoes kept falling off. And it was uh, we played really early, and the sun was beating down on the stage, and the stage was really hot, and it tore part of the. Skin of my feet off. Oh no! It's mostly feet related. This foot, yeah, foot stuff. Any anything else from you guys? Uh, Miss tour. The worst thing that happened to me was uh, got kicked in the finger. It wasn't that bad, but it was pretty bloody. Oh yeah. yeah strings were covered in blood for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Anything from you, man? Uh, I had a cut on my hand from my guitar for like a couple weeks of this tour. That every night before we went on stage, I'd forget to put a band aid on it, mm -hmm. and it would like heal up overnight. And then I would like go in right in the first song, and it would just, just open up again. Break back open. So blood yeah, right. yeah, I was wearing duct tape for a while on my hand. When That's good, but the nothing too serious. Yeah, nothing nothing too like serious. yeah, nothing where you like almost like you know had to call it quits for some other reasons, right? Nah, yeah. I know. But alcohol but there, poisoning a couple. Yeah, times. yeah. <laughs> that that that'll come. That'll come from playing and not playing as well, right? Yeah, yeah but uh, I know at one point you were thinking about calling it quits though right isn't there a point where like the band was kind of breaking up or did yeah. break up or We're what happened there it right now. it's <laughs> You're yeah. thinking about it right now it's a, it was broken up the day it started <laughs> yeah is yeah. that kind of what, how it's been in and out or how did that work out there's been a lot of lineup changes brandon's been in the band the longest probably mm -hmm. other than me and uh yeah it's just it's just a revolving door so we just have a lot of friends that kind of come and go as they please most of mm -hmm. most of the time it's just like always on good terms and people come back like we've got kind of a revolving door of musicians mm -hmm. that come and go yeah the tours so do you think that helps like kind of keep you guys motivated or do you think it more or less is a pain in the ass and you gotta like uh, keep it's redoing? super convenient is yeah, it really great. yeah like, that's cool riley and peter here this is their first tour with us and they just kill it all the time and like awesome it's uh if somebody you know everybody's got grown-up lives there's no money and punk music so yeah like everybody's gotta have a job and do stuff so yeah i actually remember i like i read an interview with you recently and you've t you talked about that you kind of mentioned like how you have to separate like the music with the music industry do you kind of like find yourself like battling that line like trying to make enough money to actually do this but not trying to like you know sign this big record deal and being forced in a corner where you have to do something you don't want to do i think it was stressful when we when like we were trying, and now, now just doing it. Like, yeah. I'm not worried. About, I don't think any of us are too worried about anything. Yeah, it's just nice being back on the road and being in the states is always fun. Yeah, Doing stuff like this is great. Totally. So, yeah, like if if you concentrate on it too much, it can bring you down for sure, probably. But mm -hmm. so you kind of more or less just like, okay, we're gonna have our jobs, real life things, and then just do this when we can, or. Um, yeah, like the, the good thing about it being kind of a revolving door is people can kind of come and go as they please. See, There's yeah. no like, oh, you can't do this. Well, you, you know, quit your job or do this tour kind of thing. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. if you want to do it, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Exactly. There's lots of people. To be that, willing like, to do it. Kind of like not yeah. in that yeah, sense, but, but yeah, like it's just mean. like fun. Like Peter and mm -hmm. Riley and Brandon and I have been playing for a while now and it's great. And yeah, there's just, there's no like, we try and keep the lines blurry of, who, like who's in the band who you know the band is more just a bunch of friends at this point cool man yeah, yeah. that's good i bet it relieves some pressure and you know yeah it's great it's, nice. it's super convenient cool well you guys can roll that next song when are we ready <laughs>
you were watching my YouTube live with single mothers. We touched a little earlier about like careers or you know like doing things outside of the band. You used to like gold prospect, Drew, right? Like you used to like dig for gold or or something. Yeah. So so how does that work nowadays? Cause I know back in the day you had to use like a thing and like water and like shuffle. Is there like machines now or what are you, yeah, what were yeah. you doing? It's different in Canada, so it's all in the bedrock in Canada. So oh okay. It's not like going out and like. Pant, like doing that yeah okay yeah because I, I that's what i pictured like you like in the mountains by yourself just it's like, similar like that yeah. so there's like in in the mid 2010s 12s there was a mm -hmm. uh, kind of a gold spike gold rush and i have an aunt and uncle that have been prospectors up near timmins ontario which is uh, about 10 hours north of toronto um for some years and and i was broke and i uh, couldn't find a job anywhere else and mm -hmm. I ended up going up there and working with them and uh, kind of put the band on hold for yeah. a bit. And yeah, it's mostly just going out into the into the woods and finding old old posts like from other prospectors that have been there like okay. decades before and mm -hmm. and like you claim a piece of land and it's cam it's basically camping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. do you have to like dig physically or like how does that like come about as like finding the gold and have you hit anything? Like have you found like a giant brick of gold and no like, that's no okay, no, okay that okay. didn't work really that way um really you try and basically like just flip the claims that you get to somebody that would want to dig oh for I see them. like yeah so yeah. this is like the basic prospecting thing that i was doing was just trying to find something that a piece of land that could have gold run through it mm -hmm. and then try and sell that to somebody that okay so you're finding the location more or less not the gold itself kind of yeah yeah okay the gold can be like hundreds of feet kilometers down cool down you guys know that song gold digger i think it's kind yeah. of <laughs> yeah yeah that song's about yeah sure. yeah that's here written personally <laughs> there's a there's a much better way to explain it um but that's yeah. that's basically you that's get like, the gist of it yeah. But yeah, that's cool though. Is it, uh, do you think that probably helped camping obviously out in the middle of nowhere for months at a time like you did? Do you think it helped with your personality, with the writing or with anything in general? Or? Um it made it makes touring a lot easier cuz like you mm -hmm. it it was a lot rougher up there than it is like sleeping in a van or mm -hmm. or uh like roughing it on the road is, yeah. is nothing compared to what it was like up there. So so how would you do that? You'd like bring your backpack probably, you pitch a tent, and then would you like, how'd you get food? Were you hunting, fishing? Like, no, no, just, no, you no. Bring, I wasn't like you, Davy Crockett. Yeah, it I didn't know like, like how like, intense You bring is. cans of food and stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, and sometimes, it depends. Sometimes you go out for an afternoon, sometimes you go out for a couple of weeks. Um, okay. You're with like a, a team of people generally. Oh, okay, cool. And cool. you go out and then like you have a base camp set up mm -hmm. and then you kind of go out for the day and you come back to the base camp, everybody... Has a cool. few beers and makes a can of beans or whatever. Yeah, chit yeah. chats. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that's yeah, that's funny. That's awesome. Do you still do that now or? Um, no, I haven't done it in a little bit. Um, it's still I still like talk to my aunt and uncle all the time, but cool. it's just people only pay for exploration work when like gold's pretty high, so mm -hmm. it hasn't been super high lately. Awesome. And what do you guys do outside the band, like for work or for whatever? If you can go around, start wherever. Uh, I kind of just do whatever. Um, whatever I can, like, for the time that I'm, that I'm off tour. Okay, yeah, um, odd jobs and stuff. For a long time, I worked at a record store for mm -hmm. four or five years, um, and then I uh, came to Toronto and, and met these guys. Cool. Um, and uh, I was, uh, the most interesting job I've ever had is I actually worked at an axe and knife throwing um, place. So I, I, so I knew nothing about it, and I basically was, like, someone's coach for, like, bachelor parties or birthday parties. <laughs> and... Uh, would teach people how to like throw a fireman's axe over their head and like archery and throw like throwing knives and stuff. So that that's the most interesting job I've had. I've had like a, a ton of random stuff that I've done. But what was that place called? Was it called Bad Axe? Uh, Strike. Strike. Okay. Cool. Yeah. With a yeah. Y. Yeah, because I think there's another one. <laughs> there's another one called Bad Axe. I think as yeah. In there's Chicago a ton of them. Yeah. Like it, I guess it's like it's becoming kind of popular yeah but, um, yeah but it's it's i guess it's pretty easy just to teach like people who are only going to do it while they're drunk or partying so it's you yeah. don't really it's not like some guy coming in like asking for specific lessons and like like technique perfect you know what i mean yeah. it's more or less yeah, they're just everyone's trying to have just fun. like yeah. they're there to just have a good time but the record store was definitely the the coolest yeah, yeah so oh, yeah. yeah what about you man uh i work odd jobs at home as well yeah cool i'm basically working at anything i can do to become super famous though how is it going? YouTube, you got not, Twitch. Not that good. You, not that good. Also, mostly. <laughs> this might help, hopefully. 
<laughs> uh, most of my cafe jobs, though, I feel like I threw more axes than Peter did at his axe throwing job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Opening things or just at people or customers. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. What about you, man? I work at like a manufacturing shop. It's mostly like fashion stuff, but cool. I mainly do uh, these like super t- like tall socks and I put designs on them with a heat press. Oh, nice. All awesome. Day long. Yeah. That's do you do any like designs by yourself too? Do you like do you do any design work? No. No, I myself. noticed I noticed in your albums they're actually really rad like work. The past few albums have had like this consistent like simplicity to them, I guess in a way. Did you guys like keep that in mind when you're doing that or is that someone you just, you know, get people to do it for you or Um, we worked with Nick Steinhardt um, Okay, yeah. for for those ones and uh yeah, like it was kind of just an idea. We wanted to keep it simple, and he yeah. was, he was great. Yeah, cool. So he's good at that. Yeah, I've noticed that. I you, that's like a consistency with you guys. I really dig the art. It's been pretty oh, simple and to the point, which I'm I'm into. Cool. Butter. Thank you. <laughs> butter. Drew, Drew likes butter a lot. <laughs> smooth, smooth. You guys can roll that next one whenever you're ready. talking a little bit about like you guys are in Toronto now right all of you all of you or just a few yeah I live like outside Toronto yeah in Hamilton okay yeah and then where did you originally grow up and like the band actually start um in London Ontario which is like okay a couple hours west cool and like that's like a mid kind of more obviously a smaller town than Toronto kind of more of a mid-level town right yeah. yeah, and then when you, growing up in like that environment and going to the music scene there, what was it like when you were younger, like going to London shows? It's great, London. Um, yeah, it's kind of like in a its own little bubble in okay. southwestern Ontario, and it had a, it had a great music scene. It had a really really good scene when I was growing up. Yeah. Um, there's a place called the Embassy that used to book shows um, that I kind of grew up going to. Call the office. We still play at and used cool. to jam at. Like, it's getting um, <clears throat> a little. Live music venues are having a hard time everywhere, I think. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. 
yeah, it was great. And then it kind of dissipated. It had a great punk scene for a long time. Then it kind of went indie for a while. And yeah. Kind of like, kinda yeah. Like punk again, I guess. Yeah, going in and out with the cycle. Yeah, yeah, I totally see that. I'm also from like a mid level town. So I kind of get that feeling of like the town being isolated and having its own thing. Did you have like like a local hometown hero band or like a band that you're really stoked? Like I'm from Michigan and when I was young, Bear vs. Shark was like the oh, band. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that Love was like, they were like the coolest band to see. Everyone was trying to get hype on, like was hype on them. They actually did a session which I got to host, which was insane, you know? So I'm just thinking like being kind of isolated and coming from a music scene similar, did you have like a band or bands that you're just like really stoked on growing up? Growing up, yeah. Like in high school, there were definitely bigger bands in London, like, this band Blue Skies at War, which were really big in mm. London, Shotgun Rules. Um, those bands that like were really, really big in London and in the surrounding areas, but like I don't know, I don't think they ever really broke. London was a very yeah. like you could be huge in London and, and nobody would know who you are in Toronto. Outside. Kind of yeah. yeah it was, totally. It's a weird city. And do you think any of those bands that you listed kind of like helped pick you up or help have you pick up an instrument or actually get motivated or what got you to like want to play um i just uh, i just always i don't know from like the beginning of time yeah since you were remember, since yeah. you can remember as since a kid. i was a kid like i yeah. just i since like grade six i guess when i got a guitar i just wanted mm -hmm. to be in a band no matter what and cool. like yeah it wasn't specifically any band or anything like that not like a specific was, moment yeah do you guys have like any moment or specific band or time where you're just like that's what I want to do, or is it just kind of the same deal? In terms of playing in bands, yeah, I think uh, this is kind of lame, but no, uh, it's okay. Mine would first be lame time too. I saw School of Rock, I was like that age, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, you were young and you yeah. you saw the kids on stage playing, and I was yeah. Like, That's that kind or of you, me. you saw like the School of Rock school thing they do now. Or are you talking about the movie? The movie, the movie. yes, yeah. yes. My brother is probably on the same boat. He plays yeah. drums, and like that's probably what got him just soaked as well. I saw we, were, we were checking the out the poster. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's awesome. Pie signature. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. What about you guys? Anything? I, I don't know. I've just played drums since I was a kid, and mm -hmm. I there's tons of bands I liked and have been inspired by. Totally. Just kind of, I guess I just wanted to do it because I did it. Yeah, it just was something you've been doing, and not like a specific moment in time or band or anything. Yeah. Push that. Cool. Yeah, not really. Yeah. Um, I, I started playing drums and probably the band that I knew I wanted to be a drummer. I, I heard the Chili Peppers, Californication. Yeah. And that record for me, I was like, okay, I definitely want to play an instrument yeah. and drums. And then I think when I was like around 12 or 13, it kind of like really hit me like, oh, well, I could just start my own band. And then, um, became like playing guitar and singing because no one else wanted to mm -hmm. be the singer and stuff like that. So it was kind of, yeah, just like progress naturally cool i guess but yeah i started out like fairly young age too so yeah, yeah. that always helps too yeah. and I, I know drew you mentioned once about like another interview i was checking out about single mothers kind of being like a ride and just like you kind of doing it and letting it come out naturally do you think like that helps your mindset with decision making or is it mostly songwriting when you're talking about that <clears throat> Um, it's kind of both, like, decision-making. Um, we, we are not a band that really meticulously plans out anything. Okay, that's what I was trying um, to So I just kind of, like, throw it all at the wall and hope and it... And just hope yeah, something like, sticks. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not an organized person, mm -hmm. or nor do I want to be, really. So yeah. it's, um, it's a lot of luck and a lot of, like, everybody kind of chipping in. It's definitely a group effort to get stuff figured out and, like... That's totally. why I kind of feel just like, okay, let's just see how this turns out. Perfect. And usually it's okay. Well, it seems everybody's like it's... really smart and talented. Yeah, exactly. It seems like it's working so far. Yeah. You guys can remember that last Every one? Everybody's great. <laughs> Sick. Love yeah. you guys. We can edit that in post, right? <laughs> oh, no, we got to keep that. <laughs> it's interesting you mentioned Bear vs. Shark, though, because that is, like, one of the bands when I heard saying, I was like, that's sick. Yeah, because it's like you don't have to be perfect yeah. to be in a band. And yeah. that's kind of like one thing I, I learned from them definitely growing up as a kid. You can just kind of screw up, but not really screw up, but just figure yeah. out your own way, you know? I, it's just one right. of the bands I was like, that guy sounds like something I haven't heard before in a, like, yeah. a great way. I was like, you don't have to be great. I don't know. You don't have to. Have, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know what you're saying, though. I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, we want that last one whenever you're ready.
Cinco Mateos. Thank you guys so much for coming in. I know like you have a long drive, so I'll make it short to get you out of, guys out of here. But we really appreciate you stopping by and taking the time to do this. So thank appreciate you. that. Thanks for having us. Dude, no great. problem. Yeah, I also want to thank the lighting and camera crew, the audio engineers, Thanks, everyone everybody. here at Audio Tree helps make this happen. Sorry if appreciate I was that. that you, I oh, no, it's fine. We're used to that. Um, their new record, Our Pleasure, is out now. Make sure you pick that up. They're going on a UK tour and a Canadian tour, so if they're playing near you, go see them live. They're really good. Um, if you want to help support the band and Audio Tree, you can do so by downloading the session when it comes out in a few weeks. Until then, we'll see everyone next time. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.